<clears throat> All right, we're live. Uh, howdy, guys. Uh, Jimmy Song here. Welcome to another episode of Bitcoin Tech Talk, where I discuss the week's news and Bitcoin tech stuff. Anyway, um, you know what? I forgot totally to like put it on all of my social media and stuff like that. Um, so forgive me while I put this post up over in another uh, on LinkedIn and many other places just so people can um, you know, find it and so on. Sorry about that. Anyway, um, hopefully you guys can hear everything and you know, like uh, I, I have had trouble with these videos. I hate how uh, you know, YouTube changed things so it's not Hangouts uh, live anymore. It's like you have to use like some sort of streaming software off your desktop and then stream it all the way over. Can't use the browser, kind of sucks, but it is what it is and I'm, I'm gonna have to learn uh, from it and become a better um, you know, live streamer, I guess, as a result. Anyway, uh, this is uh, the show to discuss uh, various tech stuff uh, that, that's happened in the past week. Um, so here is uh, what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at um, you know, the, the, uh, the newsletter I send out every Monday. I sent it out earlier today. And uh, if you want to subscribe, uh, the link is below. Please go pound that like button if you appreciate this content. Uh, but before I go and do all that, let me go to programmingbitcoin.com. And that is where I have all of my stuff, including my book, uh, Programming Bitcoin from O'Reilly. I also have the other book, the Little Bitcoin book. And this is, uh, you know, the book that I wrote with seven other people. It's a very gentle introduction to Bitcoin from, uh, you know, not necessarily like uh a technical perspective, but from more slightly more monetary perspective that people can easily grasp. Um, the other thing is the programming blockchain seminar. The next one is coming to San Francisco on November 5th and 6th. Uh, there's not much time to um, maybe you have maybe a week to get the uh, full thousand uh, dollar discount uh, to attend the seminar. This is pretty much the only one I have scheduled for the rest of the year. Uh, you know, please take a look at it if this is something that you want to learn, um, you know, Bitcoin programming and so on. I am working on a second class programming wallet, which will be sort of like the, uh, the follow up to the programming blockchain class. Um, I'll probably try to turn that into a book eventually. But yeah, I mean, it, I'm, I'm currently working on it, trying to get all of that done. All right, so that is about it for uh, the stuff that I am doing. Let's talk about uh, issue number 156. So uh, Bitcoin news, uh, I think it was more heavy on uh, lightning this week, but here is uh, the first article on Chain Capital. This is by Parker Lewis, and he has had a wonderful uh, series of articles on on-chain capital um, dot com and you can you can take a look at all of his articles i think they're all worth reading uh they definitely come from sort of an economics perspective which is uh which is parker's background he he definitely knows his economics and uh you know making uh, like very sound arguments about all of that and th this is an excellent article about you know, like, OK, why why does the dollar have value again? And and then going on and talking about, you know, um, U.S. debt versus nominal GDP and stuff like that. And then uh, going through, you know, like how much uh, how much debt there is and so on uh, monetary base. And then you can you can sort of see like some insane um, billions of dollars that keep getting printed and so on. Uh, the the argument he's making is that it's it's not backed by nothing. It's it's backed by actually mining and proof of work, and it's a it's a security thing. It's um, you know it, it's a little more abstract than something that's physical like gold, but it's it's just as real, and that that's uh, that's a large part of his point. Anyway, he he's going to make the argument next week about how Bitcoin is not a pyramid scheme. I look forward to that. I think he. Uh, you know, Par Parker also lives here in Austin. So, you know, I, I um, and I, I know he's a really smart guy. So um, definitely recommend reading this article uh, if you have a chance. All right. Um, all right. Second article is Bitcoin equals freedom. So Ross Ulbricht uh, is writing 
medium article somehow from prison i i think he just basically writes it out on a piece of paper like this and then he sends it over to somebody who then uh writes it out uh but this in of itself is really interesting uh they're they're really um good uh you know i mean it's he's talking about how bitcoin is a lot about uh you know about freedom and it's it's really an interesting uh, way to view things, uh, especially given where he is at the moment. Anyway, uh, great article. Take a look at it. Um, you know, obviously, you know, he, he's uh, not in the best circumstances, um, but, you know, he, he makes some really good arguments there. All right. So this is an uh, interesting uh, BIP. Um, I think this is one of two BIPs that have been drafted, but uh, currently aren't uh, assigned a number. But this is essentially a competitor to Neutrino. This is a way for um, uh, for there to be deterministic block filters for light clients. Uh, Neutrino, again, is fixing a lot of what um, you know BIP37 did with Bloom filters and so on. Uh, th this is a lot more secure and it's a lot uh, easier. Uh, Neutrino is at least a lot easier to think about and reason about. Th this is, um, you know, like an alternative to Neutrino that they're proposing. Uh, very interesting stuff. There's, uh, you know, it's it's a very well specced out thing. And, uh, and you know, I, I, I'm, I, I don't know if uh, many core developers have actually commented on this. I just thought it was really interesting because... It's not just um, you know neutrino. There there are other ways to design these filters and get different trade offs and so on. So uh, that's that's something that uh, we'll probably get on the radar fairly soon. Uh, lightning. All right. So this is the bug that um, that essentially every every implementation had to patch in uh, in the past month or so. And uh, I, I think Lalu teased it by saying, please upgrade. We'll, we'll give the full disclosure a month from now. It's been a month. They, uh, and they, uh, you know, on time, they, they told us exactly what happened. Um, so the bug was discovered on uh, June 27th. LND and Eclair were notified and CVEs were assigned. Um, uh, LND, Eclair, and C Lightning all fixed it on July 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. So it took about a week to fix all of that. Um, other projects uh, got disclosed um, and, uh, and essentially, um, you know, the, you know every, everyone was told to go and, you know, try to upgrade as soon as possible. This was 8, 7, uh, around, you know, like 8.17 or so. Um, there was uh, somebody that exploited this on uh, September 7th and then the full um, uh, full disclosure was done on September 27th and then the, there was a change to the bolt spec in order to require this. Now, what, what, what the heck was it? Well, essentially, it's, it, it, as, as far as I can tell, it's, it's something about the, the channel transaction not validating um, that the previous um, the funding transaction is actually on chain before doing it. Um, so uh, you know, once the funding transaction is seen, peers must check that the outpoint described in funding created is a funding transaction output with the amount described in open channel. So essentially, it wasn't it wasn't checking uh, for the funding amount and so on. And that's that's kind of what caused the problem. And that's, uh, you know, I, I, I'm good on them to reveal that. Seems kind of fundamental to me, uh, but somehow they all missed it. Um, you know, it, stuff like that happens. But this this is what why we called, uh, you know, uh, Lightning sort of alpha slash beta software. Um, you know, it'll have bugs like this. And uh, the fact that they fixed it is great. Um, all right, next one uh, is Olympus, and this is from Zap Wallet, and this is uh, this is Jack Mahler's uh, talking about what's going on with Zap, and essentially they're going to have some sort of Lightning enabled fiat on ramp, um, you know, using Zap, um, and I, I guess the name Olympus is supposed to be kind of like um, you know like a Greek god or uh, Zeus is the god of lightning or something like that and 
you know, Olympus is like where you can go and meet the gods, um, something like that. Uh, so anyway, uh, it's it's a Fiat on ramp, um, and it's not released yet, but it has been announced. So we'll we'll see. Um, I mean, the the big thing is AML KYC will not be required. Um, you know, so using something called Turbo Channels. Um, and you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how all of this works. And I'm, I'm really curious as to how, um, everything will go. All right. Uh, next one is, uh, formal security, uh, proof paper. All right. So a composable security treatment of the lightning network. This is an academic paper from the university of Edinburgh. Um, but basically they, they, they checked out the claims of Lightning um, in a formally verifiable way, and they verified that Lightning has the security that, um, you know, like it's essentially Bitcoin, and uh, and you know it's it's done in a trustless way. Uh, don't believe the FUD. It's uh, it's a really, um, you know, I mean it, it, the the fact that they've gone through and formally verified it is amazing, and that's uh, that's further proof that Lightning is not what the critics say it is. All right, and uh, and this last one is a Medium article um, from Jordan Clifford, and basically it's uh, it's talking about blockchains. I, I I thought this was a very nice way to uh, frame the discussion. There are different types of blockchains: uh, UTXO versus account based. Uh, Bitcoin is UTXO based. Um, Ethereum is account based, and goes through all of the ways and you know like you know, sort of the advantages disadvantages and so on um and you know it's a it, it's a good way to take a look i mean i mean, it's it's a good way to reason about it and uh yeah that that in itself is good all right um i i also have a bunch of uh videos that i did earlier this week i'll be uh, i'll be creating more of them uh probably later today and uh, releasing them over the week or so um, anyway, that is about it for the Bitcoin Tech Talk issue. Let's see. Um, are there any good, uh, any open, any good open source user facing Bitcoin apps that an engineer can contribute to? I imagine many. Uh, most Lightning implementations have lots of. Um, they are open source and they're user facing for certain. A lot of wallets are the same way. Um, so absolutely, that that's that's something that will you know be a bigger part of um, you know pretty much most open source projects. Even Bitcoin Core, there's there's Bitcoin Qt, which is a user facing uh, wallet that uh, users can use. So uh, there there's a lot of lot of stuff like that. Um, all right. Uh, I mean, I, I guess that's about it for the questions. Uh, you know, if if there aren't any more, I think uh, I think we're gonna call it a day. Let me let me. Uh, I mean, just in case there's more, um, I'll I'll uh, show my stuff again. Um, programming Bitcoin. Uh, not programming. Programmingbitcoin.com. And uh, this is my website. You can get uh, the Programming Bitcoin book from O'Reilly. It's available on Amazon for about 40 bucks. Little Bitcoin book, it's available on Amazon for about eight bucks. Um, and of course, we have the Programming Blockchain uh, seminar coming up on November 5th and 6th. Um, so you got about a month to plan this thing. And yeah, if you, if you want to uh, come and learn from me. Anyway, that uh, is about it. I don't think there are any more questions. Uh, thank you for watching. Hopefully this helps you. This song is done.